Hey everybody, I'm Murphy Quint, head distiller here at Cedar Ridge Distillery, located in Swisher, Iowa. Today I'm hanging out with some of the guys from the band Slipknot. We've got Clown, V-Man, and New Guy. We're going to be talking about all things Slipknot, including Slipknot Number 9 Iowa Whiskey. We'll also be answering a few questions from the Slipknot fan club outside the Nine. While we're at it, we're going to be signing some of these bottles. If you're interested in placing an order for one of them, please click the link in the copy below and place your order today. Supplies are limited. All right, how's it going, guys? What have you been up to? Been doing good. Good? Right now is kind of an interesting time. We're, uh, we're uh, taking this time to write some new music. So for the last week, we've been just uh, having a good time, eating a lot of food, and writing God music. So we're, uh, we're having a good time. Um, during the pandemic, other than writing music, what have you guys been up to? Writing music. <laughs> just, just writing. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, I, I've come from uh, the UK, so we're in a bit of a lockdown as well at the moment. So flew over a couple of weeks ago. So. We're lucky to have been able to get in, to be able to come over the pond and uh, do what we do. And since everybody's taking a lot of time off, we thought we'd utilize it by getting together and do what we probably do best, which is write music. Awesome. So it's, it's been good because there's no pressure. It's not like we have to. Um, we're doing it because we want to. And um, it's just been a blessing because, you know, boredom can set in. And I know all of us in the world are going crazy. So we're really lucky to be able to be together and do what we love most. Absolutely. All right. Um, considering that both the band and this whiskey are from the state of Iowa, let's talk about that for a second. What's your favorite thing about the state of Iowa? What um, is most appealing about this state to you guys? Well, for me, you know, it's always been the four seasons. I, I like, I, I think a certain sort of human can be around that and uh, there's a mindset. So I've always enjoyed that, you know, consciously we have to go through the four seasons. I feel like that helps my writing. I feel like that helps me as a person um, to look forward to each season and how the brain changes. So I just always, and because because not everybody wants to deal with the snow. You, you're dealing with a certain sort of person that will and just becomes kind of who you are and, and what it is and what the state is. So I just think it's beautiful here still. And it's not as crowded, obviously. And, um, you know, it's where I'm from, so it's hard to get away from here. Absolutely. What, what about you guys? What, what do you like about Iowa? Well, it's very similar, the four seasons situation was as in England you know I, I, I have a big fan of the cold I'm a big fan of the heat and everything so for me it's nice to go somewhere where it's exactly how it is in England you know yeah. whereas you know my wife she's from uh, you know we lived in uh, Los Angeles where it's just hot all the time and for me that's not uh, you know I like to see the snow so it was good to the other day when I got in to see snow because I haven't seen that in uh, England in a while. So. Awesome. What about you? <laughs> he doesn't talk much. Spot on, spot on. <laughs> um, on that note, how important is it to you guys that this product comes from the state of Iowa? You know, I mean, basically that's the only reason why I mainly got as interested in all this that I did was for the simple fact that I could do another dream and maintain it in the state that I'm from, just like the band. So, you know, once you get out there professionally, there's just people all around that want to dip in. You know, they want to make this for you, they want to make that for you. And it, it just gets lost, you know. And for me, anytime I want to do something, I really think about it. And I want to, obviously, I want to do it right and do it to the best of my ability. But um, it's mainly the very first recipe ingredient is that it all starts and ends here pretty much and that was uh really important for me because i understand it here i can drive here um you guys are a lot like i am and you know it's just easy to do business and make art so it's it's it's, it's not a knock on anywhere else it's just i'm not from there i'm from here and i love the fact that we use iowa corn and uh we just keep it in the state and Hopefully, again, Slipknot will make something bigger than most things for this state. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. All right. How would you guys say that this whiskey is related to Slipknot and Slipknot's music? 
the herb. I mean, the alcohol in general, you know, hard rock, heavy metal, you know, it's fuel. And, uh, you know, to have a product that's from the place that this band has been fueled from, you know, it's, I think it's super important, you know. Some people don't drink, obviously, but, you know, the majority of people, they go to a show, they want to have a few drinks and, you know, listen to heavy metal, so. And I, and I think it's, uh, we all try to take care of our own in this community, so why not have our own whiskey? Um, on the subject of how, how the whiskey's related to Slipknot's <coughs> music, I know that that was something that was really fun for us as a producer uh, because the type of whiskey that we normally produce is a little bit more approachable here. It's, it's you know, may, maybe soft isn't the right word, but uh, we wanted the whiskey to really represent your band and your music, so we needed to go with something that was a little bit bolder, um, a little bit stronger, and a little bit louder. And so that was really fun on our end to try to uh, basically create a whiskey that's flavor profile matches your style of music um, it allowed our team to really change things up and have a good time. So that's something that, that we certainly appreciated on our end. Um, so on, on the subject of drinking whiskey, uh, in what setting do you guys like to enjoy your whiskey? Where at or what, what are you doing when you like to have a dram? How do you like to enjoy it? I'll be honest. For me, I, I mainly enjoy whiskey by myself. It's a much needed thing, you know, and it's a much needed thing, I think, in private for myself. It's not that I don't share or, or indulge in social cultural stuff it's just i i tend to find myself alone needing a break needing a little stress and and just really enjoying it by myself but i, I do drink it with others but mainly by myself um since we got back to the uk uh i had a couple of bottles of the reserve and you know me and my dad would sit down and watch a movie and you know obviously not go through the whole bottle but you know <laughs> We'd have a few sips on it and stuff like that. So, yeah, that kind of setting, really. It's not really a... I like to enjoy an alcohol like this. I don't want, I don't want to mix it with Coke or anything like that. You know, I want it to be just pure. So. Very cool. Absolutely. All right, we'll pop into a, a few questions submitted through the Slipknot Fan Club outside the nine. Um, this first one is from... I, I hope I don't butcher this. Uh, my apologies if I do. Uh, Azrael? Azrael? Um, from Indianapolis. What was your biggest concern when releasing We Are Not Your Kind? You know, at this point, not to have a cop out or anything, we don't really have any concerns. We do what we want, when we want, how we want, as much of it as we want. You all know that. That's what we do. Um, if there was a concern, it's the same concern as always, and that's not to finish anything too quickly, not to abide by the, the system's rules and time restraints and um, we always try to work very 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 hard to make sure that the album creation is what it needs to be without any pressure from the outside business like touring or interviews signings you know so if there are any concerns that would be one just to not you know cave under pressure and and submit something that we're not completely happy with. Awesome, I agree. <laughs> well said. <laughs> well said, V-Man. Um, this next one is from Tristan in Sioux Falls. Um, she says, is there any possibility of Gematria being included in future sets? You know, that's a, that's a very intense song. It's a very long song. Um, it, doing our sets is, uh, can be very, is a labor of love because there are so many songs we have not played still to this day. And when you start making up a set list and you start including these songs that have never been played, you start realizing that some of the, the other songs that people really seem to want to hear take, pre, you know, they, they take up that slot. So I don't see that song honestly being attached to the set anytime soon, but because of the world's, uh, you know, recent uh, climate, all kinds of bands are trying to do special things. So I wouldn't put it past us to getting together and doing some special things. Who knows, maybe we get together and play our albums. And if we did that and All Hope was one of them, you would be able to hear that song. Nothing is planned yet, but there is circulation of speaking about 
doing full albums and stuff like this during this climate, you know, but not, not, nothing booked or, or thought all the way through yet. Perfect. Uh, this next question I like a lot because obviously this year has been pretty tough on everyone. There's a lot of negative news and stuff out there. Shannon from Massachusetts asks, what has been your favorite part of this year? Well, mine would be getting married. So that, you know, we, I had a difficult time trying to fit that in because of we weren't allowed to get married because of mm-hmm. no one was allowed to be inside government buildings and stuff. So finally being able to do that, that was, that was my thing. And second would be coming here and doing music because I, honestly I thought I wasn't going to be seeing the band for a while. So it was nice to be able to come out here and you know, do that. Basically, I've just enjoyed uh, doing nothing. I mean, I'm so busy all the time and I'm even busy right now, you know, um, but at least I get to sleep in my own bed, got a couple new puppies, fixing up a house, just relaxing with the family. So it's just been good to actually have the world tell me to take it easy for a minute. So I'm not, but I, I am a lot less working than I have been, you know, so it's been nice just to kind of B, you know? It's been a nice reset for everybody, hopefully. Um, Richard from California asks, any plans for a new live Blu-ray release? Well, there's no, you know, every album cycle, we like to try to put something together. And because We Are Not Your Kind has been kind of cut short, we we don't know if we're getting back out there and completing it. Um, If we are, you know, we'd have to wait until the end of it, the thought process of it to get all the material together. Um, I really like to try and put out some sort of uh, collective thought process on the cycle, uh, you know, the we are not your kind cycle to give to everyone. But um, because things have been cut short, you know, everything's pushed to the future. So there'll there'll be something. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be Blu-ray or quite what it'll be, but something will come out eventually. Awesome. Uh, this next one's from Fergus over in the UK. What are your favorite What are your favorite horror movie icons and why? I'm not really into horror either, but I mean, I, I think we all agree we love the greats. You know, I mean, um, Vincent Price and you know, just just all the old school. I, I'm a big fan of you know old Dracula, old horror movies, less CG, more you know, trying to convince people that it's not fake. And that's always the best stuff back in the old days that just was too real to, to put up with. But in the Slipknot world, we always try to keep, you know, we try to keep ourselves separate from the horror. Uh, Cause it can, it can get, you know, it can get mixed up real quick what we're doing and, and, and what it is. And obviously Halloween's a huge, huge part of the world and this month being October and everything it's it's close but we always use that day to be ourselves so that's a little bit scarier than what we wear I think Uh, James Wood also in the UK uh, is asking do you think the current situation with COVID will have an impact on the lyrical themes of your next record Uh, you know we don't usually speak for Corey or whatever but um, I can imagine that anything that affects him uh, and affects us and affects you, it, it will be included. To, to the extent, I don't know how blatant it will be, I don't know, but uh, we are all living this and everybody is involved. So wouldn't really know what Corey, w- what road he's gonna be going down or, or information that he wants to spread, you know? Not sure, we're not quite there yet. Uh, Daniel in California says, uh, where are you finding inspiration for your work lately? You know, I mean, our work is, it's all day, every day, every month, every year. Um, just because we're writing right now, it's not like we were told. It's just something that, you know, I want to do. And we just use life as an inspiration. You never know when it's going to come. You don't know what day you're going to get hit up with something that could create something surreal. So, you know, life is just our motivator. We, we pay a lot of attention to our fans, the climate. Uh, the temperature, and we really try to incorporate our our culture more than anything. It's a it's a thought process of thinking for all of us that um, you know keeps it going. So 
our lives together um, are what keep the life going, I guess, if that makes sense. So it's just, just living life. I was gonna say it's an evolution. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we do, we spend a lot of time worrying about not repeating ourselves. You know, so it's always, we, we, we have to evolve. And in order to evolve musically, you have to pay attention to just about everything that's going on in life in order to, to, to translate that, especially through music, to be able to feel music like the day you're living in and, and the city you're living in and the people you're sharing a relationship with. It's, a, it's not that it's tricky. It's just very, music's very personal and very emotional. And... Um, I guess, yeah, we use, uh, we use this life and where it's headed and we head with it. Very cool. Very cool. Um, Daniel has a follow-up question. Uh, can you give us some details behind Critical Darling? I'm curious what the meaning or backstory of it is. Well, a lot of what was written on We Are Not Your Kind that you can find out from Corey is a lot was from a past relationship. I don't usually like to try and identify anything with his lyrics because I just don't want to upset him or be wrong. Um, but what I can tell you is past relationships, uh, a certain person, maybe that person being critical, I don't know. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really feel comfortable too much, you know. Like I said, I just don't want him to get upset because we misrepresented, you know, it. But definitely past relationship. Very cool. Um, Adam from Australia asks, what's your favorite thing about Australia? Uh, I'm a massive fan of Australia. I love going there. So, uh, it's beautiful. It's, uh, I like the fact that it's so big and you can just go from nothing to just a city. Uh, yeah, beautiful wildlife. It's kind of like I call Australia the mixture between England and America. It's like half and half. Yeah, Australia reminds me of like Texas. It's like uh, we go there a lot. Been going there since 99, 2000. Greatest fans, like, like always, like all fans. Beautiful place. We hit all the major territories. It's a good time. Um, you know, we, we usually go from Japan to Australia to New Zealand and back. So we get to hit three really beautiful places all at once. And it's cool because you go to Japan, you think you flew to a different world. And then you go from there to Australia and now you're in a different world again. And then you go to New Zealand and you're like, what is going on? You know, so we have a really, really good time. It's, lo it's really hard traveling, though. It's a, it's a lot of hours there. It's a lot of delusion, you know, because of sleep and flying and just it's, it's pretty much craziness. But wonderful, wonderful place. Absolutely, and Adam has a follow-up question for Clown. Uh, why are you freaked out about koalas? Well, why wouldn't you be? They're, they're extremely dangerous. I mean, they're stoned out on those eucalyptus leaves. They're, they're, their blood is barely moving. And then, not to get into it, but you know, what I'm scared of is this thought that when they mate, like the zookeepers have to pull the male off or he'll maim the, the, the female. And when I went, when I went and we were walking and they were just opening the park, these things were screaming like bloody murder. Like if you didn't know it was a koala and you were walking into a, a forest and something made that sound, you would be, you would swear to God that the devil was <laughs> running around. I mean, they are intense and the way their claws are, and then they want you to hold it for a picture. Uh-uh. No way. I like the picture. I did that. Every time I go to Australia, I do a picture. I have to get a picture. I have bad luck. So I'm the one guy they maim while trying to sleep. And I mean, they're just, they're just so stoned out <laughs> that, and then they're just eh, like, you know, just no, 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 no. You can't trust a koala bear. Uh-uh. No way. I, I didn't know any of that. That's, that's fascinating. Just go check out one screaming and you'll be like, you'll be like, that's just not right. <laughs> I'll have to do that. Um, all right. Christian from California is hoping that you guys can tell us one of your funniest tour stories. I, I don't know what funny is because uh, I think what we think is funny is just garbage that we go through that 
probably isn't funny, but ends up being funny in later years. You gotta have something. I've got, but it'll probably get other people in trouble, so I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> well, that's the other thing, is usually what's funny could probably get us in trouble too. It's kind of <laughs> like what happens on the road stays on the road. Yeah. But, um, I mean, other bands, other tours, you know, like one of the, it's probably from one of those festivals, I'm like, the touring festivals, maybe like a walk tour or some fucking thing like that, where it's just a hundred people and they're all stuck around each other for like two months, trailing around like a circus, you know, it's one of those type of things, but I probably shouldn't say anything, <laughs> you probably get people in trouble. Yeah, it's, uh, let's just put it this way. A lot of funny shit happens out on the road because of boredom. It's, you know, it's 22 and a half hours of pure bullshit <laughs> and an hour and a half of what you signed up for and what you love. So the other 22 and a half hours, all you do is fuck with everyone. You just, we used to have this game where, um, I don't know, we called it like the assassination game. And it's like, we had these rules and we put all this money in it and it was quite a bit of money. <laughs> and you had to go around and kill each other, but we had all these rules. And within the first 15 minutes of like killing each other, there was already fights <laughs> and people arguing. So we had to get rid of that. So it's that kind of buffoonery. You make up these moronic games and things and, but someone's always, uh, gets in a little trouble and uh like you said it's kind of <laughs> we can't really yeah go to this i don't think the normal funny stuff that you want to hear is anything that happens on the road this stuff is all pretty far gone you know markering people's faces if you drink on a plane and you pass out you will go through customs with an all sharpied face <laughs> i'm not talking about a couple words i'm talking about your entire face will be black sharpie marker. I did, I did that to a band in, that we were doing a tour in Japan and uh, said band were uh, getting the train with us and the bass player passed out. So I tied his legs around the, one of the steel poles and we just painted him <laughs> and we left him on the train and he, didn't, he got in trouble and had his passport stolen. So that, like I said, those, those are how far the jokes go to the part where you tie someone up, they get their passport stolen, they're left abroad, no one knows what the hell's going on. And it's a big joke, but there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot that goes with that story. Lots of money and lots of stuff. <laughs> All right. Um, Al from the UK, what band have you never seen that you wish you had? All of them. Too many. All of them. You can imagine... You know, we're considered the hard rock metal, you know, genre. So we will hit a festival like Reading and it'll be all the hard rock bands. But the night before it was Radiohead and the night after, we're, the night after will be Prodigy. So it's all towards genres. So most of the bands that we listen to, um, a lot of bands that we listen to are out on tour with us. And a lot, the majority of bands that we love are either old and gone or the relevant bands that are today, they're the day before or the day after. And you can't stay because you're moving. You know, you can't stay to check that band out because you got to show the same night they do. So you could give me a list and just about everybody on it would be someone I want to see because we're, we're sort of stuck with the same bands for the last 20 years. I mean, there are bands that I used to like that I will not listen to anymore because I've been with them for 20 years. And it's not personal, it's just that I've seen them live so many times and it just, you know, you start getting voided of all the other stuff you wanna do. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, Kyler from Virginia. Kyler is a fan of horror films and uh, wants to know if there's any horror inspiration in creating your masks, your cover art, or your music videos. Well, once again, I mean, not to be, you know, sound pessimistic or, you know, angry or anything. It's just we try to make sure that Slipknot is separate than horror, separate than all-star wrestling, separate than circus, you know, freak show, Slipknot, Slipknot. Um, as you may or may not know, Corey Taylor's new mask was made by uh, someone in that genre. I'm sorry that I don't know his name right now, but you can look it up. Tom Say it. Tom Savini. Tom Savini made Corey's new mask. Sure. And, um, you know, Corey's huge, huge into horror. Okay. Um, 
you know, so we love it. We're addicted and all those things, but you know, it, it becomes, we just like to keep the focus on what we are and what we are is very separate than, than horror, but that doesn't mean that we don't like it, but it doesn't, it doesn't really creep into our world at all. Uh, and if it does, it's more or less in the Corey side of things because he's so, he's immersed in it, you know? So it's natural, it's, it's real. Um, so, you know, if that explains it. For sure. Um, and, and on the subject of masks, something that, I, that I've always wondered, um, how sacred are the masks in the sense that, have you ever let someone else wear your mask, like your kids or anything like that? Well, we have, a, we have slipknot rules. And one of the rules is lose my mask and die. So that sort of tells you that they're, they're really personal. Some people don't care. Like for me, for example, I used to take it very personal, personal if someone just took it on and try to try to put it on or something because they don't, to me, they didn't understand the sacrifice. Leaving home, leaving kids, having to put this on. This is all a dream and not everybody just gets to jump into the dream. Obviously, we take them very serious, you know, but at the same time, yeah, yes, people have worn them. People do put them on. We do let people wear them. But they are, hey. As a select person, a select person that would get to, well, from my experience of being in the band, it's a select person, you know, it's not, hey man, can I work, <laughs> you know, it's not that person, it's gotta be someone close to you. Like my, kid, my kids will put it on. They don't have to ask, they're my kids, you know, they, they do it without even thinking, they just grab it. But then there's other people that, are entitled out there and they go crazy and they think that they, 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 can, they can do stuff like that. And it's like, it may just be a piece of plastic, but there's a thought process, that, thought process that's stuck inside of it that has to be reckoned with and respected. And, and it's like a guitar or something, you know what I mean? It's just, it's ours. So it's, you just don't put it on and it's pretty personal. Very, very cool. Um, right, getting, getting back to whiskey here, what is the future of Slipknot Whiskey? Well, basically, you know, I'm just, uh, we're just doing what we're doing, which is, you know, supplying the world with the small batch and the, the reserve, and we're very happy, and that's our goal, that's what we're doing. Um, I'm always kind of ahead of myself because I like to be, and I get bored very easy. So this holiday season, we came up with, uh, Clowns Iowa Shine. So I really wanted to make moonshine for a long time. So we worked it out. We're, uh, we're gonna be um, selling a package, a special box package where you can get a reserve bottle and a brand new bottle of moonshine that's only available in the package for order with a reserve bottle. It's not sold on its own anywhere. So I'm excited about that because it's a fun little thing. It's not like we're just trying to get another product. You know, I'm sure eventually uh, in the world it'll be for sale, but this is just a nice new little thing for us to, to supply some different fun stuff. Had really fun making the label and had a great time doing the recipe. I think we made a pretty, pretty killer stellar uh, moonshine. So that's, that's what's next as far as the business together, Cedar Ridge, Slipknot. Uh, but it's business as usual. It's trying to get the small batch and the reserve in any place and every place that sells alcohol in the entire world. Unfortunately, we have to wait for a lot of people to help understand what we do, just like the music, but eventually we will win. Absolutely, I'm with you on that. Um, before we wrap up here, any closing statements for your fans? You know, as always, man, we just want to say hello to everybody. We hope everybody's safe. We hope everybody's abiding by what they have to abide to. Uh, keep the faith. Try to stay educated. Um, please be safe. Um, I promise you, we're all going to get back together sooner or later, one way or not another. These sorts of things have happened in life before. Maybe not in our lifetime, um, but life will find a way. We will all be back. Um, I think it's a beautiful thing because I think we will all appreciate something um, that we love very much and that's getting together socially and culturally to love what we love most and that's music and none of us can live without it. So everybody hang tight, stay safe, please take care because we wanna see you out there 
Um, we love each and every one of you, and let's just get through this together. So, um, you know, yeah, we'll see you soon. All right. Well, thanks a lot for being here, guys. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Um, it's always a pleasure having you around. And thanks so much to everyone who tuned in. Um, remember, if you're interested in purchasing one of these signed bottles, please click the link in the copy below and uh, place your order today. Supplies are limited. Uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. Have a good one. Later.